Hey folks, I know I am just an old guy telling stories, but please leave a like and subscribe before we start. Let's enjoy in today's stories. I've always had a fascination with the dark web, not for the usual reasons people get drawn into that place, black markets or anything illegal, but for the strange and unexplainable. I'm a sucker for conspiracy theories, lost technology, and more recently, time travel. It's the kind of stuff that feels too wild to be true, but too detailed to ignore. One night, after browsing a few rabbit holes about secret government projects and time manipulation, I stumbled upon a forum thread. The title was vague. The clock is broken. I wouldn't have clicked on it if the description hadn't caught my eye. What if time isn't what we think it is? Curiosity got the better of me. The post was full of cryptic details, links to articles, and mentions of a website accessible only through the dark web. Now, I've been down enough strange corners of the internet to know when something feels off. But this... This felt different. The comments were all either deleted or replaced with strange timestamps, like someone had tried to write something. But the moment they hit send, it was erased, leaving only the time they posted. The original poster, a user named Tempest Fugitive, left a link that required a TOR browser to access. My gut told me to leave it alone. My brain, however, told me that I had to see it. So I clicked. After a long, laggy load, the site revealed a single sentence against a black background. Your future is already written. Want to see how? Below it, there was a blank text box where you could enter any date and time. It looked like a joke, but I couldn't help myself. I entered a random date, nothing special, two days from now at 8.34 p.m. just to see what would happen. For a second, nothing. I was about to close the tab when the screen flickered. The text box vanished, replaced by a countdown timer set to the exact date I had entered. Beneath it, the site simply said, your future will arrive. That was it. No instructions, no explanations, just a countdown. I thought it was some kind of weird prank, but the timer had triggered something in me. A sense of anticipation, like I had unlocked a door that couldn't be closed. I didn't sleep well that night. I kept thinking about the timer, how the website's promise sounded more like a threat. By morning, I had convinced myself it was all a hoax, a scam site meant to freak out people like me who thrive on mystery. But that uneasy feeling lingered, the thought that maybe, just maybe, I'd done something I couldn't undo. The next day passed uneventfully, but I couldn't stop checking the countdown. It was almost hypnotic, the numbers ticking down with an almost mechanical precision. I told myself it was all a joke, but the longer I watched, the more real it felt. Then, the following evening, something strange happened. It was 8 p.m., and the countdown was almost over. I was sitting in my living room, feeling restless, when there was a knock at the door. I hadn't ordered anything, wasn't expecting visitors. When I opened it, no one was there. Just a small, brown package sitting on the front step. No return address, no shipping label, just my name written in a neat, almost familiar handwriting. I hesitated. I live in a pretty safe neighborhood, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. The box was small, too small to contain anything significant, but it felt heavy, almost too dense for its size. I brought it inside, my heart pounding, but not in a fearful way. It was more like anticipation, like I knew this was connected to the website, to the countdown. I set it on the coffee table and just stared at it for what felt like hours. I wasn't scared, but I was on edge, as if opening it would set something in motion that I couldn't stop. Finally. I grabbed a kitchen knife and carefully slit the tape. Inside was something I never expected, a watch, a simple silver wristwatch. It looked old, like it had been worn for years, but still in decent condition. There was a note underneath it, four words scribbled in the same handwriting as my name on the box. Wear it, trust me. I don't know what possessed me, but I put it on. It was slightly loose on my wrist, but it felt familiar, like I had worn it before, even though I knew I hadn't. The second hand ticked forward, 
and the moment it aligned with the minot hand, I felt a strange pressure, like a weight had settled over the room. Not fear, not paranoia, just an overwhelming sense that something had shifted. I looked at the watch again. The time was 8.34 p.m., the exact time I had entered into that website. I don't know how to explain it, but I knew, knew that this watch wasn't just any ordinary object. The box, the handwriting, the note. I couldn't shake the feeling that this was sent by someone who knew me better than I knew myself. And that's when it hit me. What if the box hadn't come from a stranger? What if it had come from me? A future version of myself trying to communicate something, warn me about something. I know it sounds insane, but the watch, the timing, the box, it all felt too deliberate to be a coincidence. And if that website really was about time travel, what if I had already set something in motion? That night I couldn't sleep. Every time I closed my eyes I saw the watch ticking forward, each second pulling me closer to something I wasn't ready for. And that's when I noticed something on the back of the watch. There was an engraving, faint, barely noticeable in the dim light. I tilted it under my bedside lamp and my stomach dropped. The engraving was a date. Tomorrow's date. The exact time, 8.34 p.m. I had no idea what was going to happen, but whatever it was, I felt like I had no choice but to see it through. The next morning everything felt normal, as normal as it could be anyway after the events of the night before. But in a strange way that almost bothered me more. The box, the watch, the note, those things weren't just weird, they felt impossible. Yet here I was standing in my kitchen, making coffee like any other day, trying to convince myself I wasn't spiraling into paranoia. I couldn't stop thinking about the engraving on the back of the watch. Tomorrow's date, today's date now, and 8.34 p.m., just like before. Part of me wanted to believe it was some kind of elaborate prank. Maybe the website was a scam designed to mess with people, to plant weird thoughts in their heads. But the watch, the way it fit my wrist like it had been mine for years, the eeriness of it arriving the very day the website's timer hit zero. There were too many details that lined up too perfectly for this to just be a coincidence. Still, I had a whole day to get through, and I couldn't let this take over my life. I went to work like usual, half expecting something strange to happen, but it didn't. I tried focusing on my tasks, but my thoughts kept drifting back to the watch, its steady ticking echoing in my mind. Each second that passed brought me closer to 8.34 p.m., and I didn't even know what that time signified. What was supposed to happen? Why that specific time? By late afternoon, I was anxious. I didn't feel afraid but more like I was on the edge of something I couldn't quite comprehend. The watch stayed on my wrist all day, its presence a constant reminder of whatever was coming. I kept glancing at it, watching the hours slip away, the second hand moving with mechanical precision. I thought about taking it off, maybe even throwing it away, but every time I considered it, something stopped me. It was almost as if the watch had become a part of me. I couldn't talk to anyone about it either. How could I explain any of this without sounding like I was losing my mind? Hey, I ordered nothing, but a box showed up on my doorstep with a watch that might be from my future self. Yeah, no one would buy that. And besides, I didn't want to involve anyone else. Whatever this was, it felt personal. By the time evening rolled around, I was back in my living room staring at the watch more than ever. 8 p.m. came and went, and my anticipation started to build again. That heavy, unsettling pressure I'd felt the night before began creeping in, like the air itself had shifted. Every sound in the house felt amplified, the hum of the refrigerator, the creak of the floorboards, and yet, the silence felt overwhelming. At 8.20 p.m., I started pacing. I couldn't help it. I felt like something was going to happen like an event that had already been set in motion and couldn't be stopped. I knew deep down that when 8.34 hit, 
the mystery of the watch, the box, everything would be revealed. 8.25 p.m., I sat down, eyes locked on the ticking second hand. 8.30 p.m., the air felt thicker, like the room itself was holding its breath. My heart wasn't racing, but I felt an undeniable tension. 8.33 p.m., I stood up unsure of why. I had this strange urge to move like I needed to be ready for something. 8.34 p.m., exactly. Nothing happened. I just stood there staring at the watch. The second hand ticked past the point where it had been engraved and nothing. No sudden knock at the door, no mysterious noise, no flash of insight or revelation. It was almost anticlimactic. The watch continued to tick as though it hadn't been counting down to anything at all. I felt ridiculous, like I had been waiting for a magic trick that never came. For a few minutes, I just stood there, expecting, I don't know what, but it never came. Frustrated, I sat back down. Maybe I had misunderstood something. Maybe I had built all this up in my head and convinced myself something bigger was happening when it was just nothing. I felt a little foolish, to be honest, but at least I could finally relax. Maybe I'd return the watch to some lost and found site or just put it away and forget about this whole weird experience. And then I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. It wasn't a noise or a movement, but a subtle change in my living room. The watch was still ticking, but the light in the room, it had dimmed, just slightly, almost imperceptibly, but enough to make the shadows stretch in unfamiliar ways. I stood up, scanning the room, trying to figure out what had changed. The overhead lights were still on, but everything seemed slightly off, as if my apartment had become a shadow of itself. I walked to the window, but when I looked outside, I was greeted with something that made my stomach drop. It was my street, my neighborhood, but there was something wrong with it. Everything was exactly the same, except there were no people, no cars. The lights in the houses were off, and the street lamps barely illuminated anything. It was as if my world had been hollowed out, leaving behind an empty shell. I blinked rubbed my eyes and looked again, but the scene didn't change. And then I saw it. On the far side of the street, standing just out of the dim light, was a figure. It wasn't moving, but it was watching. I couldn't make out any details, just a tall, dark outline. My instinct told me to back away, but I was frozen, staring at it. Something deep inside me knew that this wasn't a random person. This had something to do with the watch, with the box, with whatever I had triggered by visiting that dark website. Before I could react, the figure stepped into the streetlight and I saw what it was holding. A box, the same box that had been delivered to me the night before. I didn't move. I couldn't. It was like time had slowed down. The figure standing there in the empty street, holding that same familiar package. My mind raced, trying to make sense of it. Was this some kind of loop? A warning? Had I set something in motion that couldn't be undone? Then, without a sound, the figure disappeared back into the shadows, leaving me standing alone in my now eerie, unfamiliar living room. And just like that, everything snapped back to normal. The light in the room returned to its regular brightness, and the street outside was suddenly bustling with life again, cars driving by, people walking their dogs all as if nothing had happened. But I knew something had changed. The watch on my wrist kept ticking, its second hand moving steadily forward. I glanced at it again, and this time there was a new engraving on the back, beneath the date. It simply read, Next time, don't open the box. I must have stared at that engraving for a solid five minutes, just trying to process it. Next time, don't open the box. My mind was spinning, trying to make sense of how the message had appeared out of nowhere. The engraving wasn't there before, I was sure of it. And the figure outside, the one holding the same box, what was that about? Was this some kind of loop I had set in motion? Had I triggered something by visiting that website? The sense of unease was growing, but it was a different kind of unease now. 
less of the creeping dread from before and more of a deep, unsettling realization that I was in over my head. Whatever this was, it wasn't just some prank or coincidence. The watch, the engraving, the figure. They were all connected and I had no idea how to stop it. That night, I tried to sleep, but my mind wouldn't let me rest. I kept replaying everything in my head, trying to piece together a timeline, figure out where things went wrong. But no matter how many times I went over it, I always landed on the same thought. That box had changed everything. The next morning, I was exhausted, but determined. I had to figure out what was happening before it got worse. The first thing I did was go back to the dark web forum where it all started, hoping for some kind of clue. The thread, the clock is broken, was still there, but something about it had changed. The user, Tempest Fugitive, was gone. All of their posts, every comment they'd made on the forum had been deleted, but that wasn't the strangest part. The timestamps from the comments that had been wiped, those cryptic, glitched out times, now matched the exact moments I'd interacted with the watch. The moment I'd received the box, the moment I'd seen the figure, and the moment I'd noticed the new engraving, it was as if the forum itself had been keeping track of my timeline, like some invisible hand was guiding these events, and I was just following the path. I scrolled through the forum, desperate for any new information, but everything had been scrubbed clean. There were no new leads, no new posts, just an empty trail that led straight to my inbox. I had a new message. It was from an anonymous user. The subject line simply said, Stop. I clicked it open, my pulse quickening. Inside was a single line of text. Do not open the next box. That's when it hit me. There was going to be another box. I didn't know when, but I could feel it. Just like before, something had been set in motion, and I was powerless to stop it. The watch on my wrist suddenly felt heavy, like it was a weight dragging me deeper into whatever was coming next. I checked it again hoping that the engraving had changed, that there'd be some new clue, but it was the same. Next time, don't open the box. I went through my day trying to act normal, but it felt like I was waiting for something to happen. I was constantly on edge, glancing out the window, checking my phone for any signs of a delivery. Every knock, every distant sound made me jump. The anticipation was unbearable, like I was living on borrowed time. And then... Just after lunch, it happened. I heard the doorbell ring. I froze. Part of me wanted to ignore it, pretend like nothing was there. But I knew better. I knew what was waiting for me on the other side of that door. Slowly, I made my way to the front door, heart pounding, hands trembling. And there it was. Another box. It was identical to the first one. Same size, same weight. No return address. My name written in that same familiar handwriting. This time, though, I didn't hesitate. I knew what I had to do. The message had been clear. Do not open the next box. I brought it inside and set it on the table, just like the last time. But instead of cutting it open, I grabbed a marker from my desk and wrote across the top in big, bold letters, Do not open. For hours, I sat there, staring at the box, resisting the urge to find out what was inside. I couldn't stop thinking about the message, the engraving, the warning. Was it really from my future self? Was I somehow communicating with myself across time, trying to prevent something from happening? The more I thought about it, the more I felt like I was trapped in some kind of paradox. I went to bed that night, leaving the box unopened on the table, but sleep didn't come easily. My dreams were filled with shadows and strange figures standing just out of reach, always watching, waiting. I kept seeing the watch, its ticking growing louder and louder, drowning out everything else until it was the only sound left. When I woke up the next morning, I was relieved to find the box still sitting there untouched. But the relief didn't last long. I could feel it, like an itch at the back of my mind. A nagging thought that refused to go away. What if I had to open the box? What if by leaving it closed I was making things worse? I tried to go about my day, but the box was always there, 
just sitting on the table taunting me. I kept thinking about the warning, about the engraving, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't shake the feeling that I needed to know what was inside. What if it was another clue? What if there was something important I was missing? As the day wore on, I found myself standing over the box, knife in hand, ready to cut it open. I was about to slice through the tape when something stopped me. A gut feeling, an instinct, maybe even fear. I put the knife down, stepping back. Number I wasn't going to open it. Not this time. But then, out of nowhere, the lights flickered. Just for a moment, the room dimmed, the same way it had the night before when the figure appeared. I looked around, heart racing. The air felt thick again, like something was about to happen. And then, just as suddenly as the lights had flickered, the power went out. I stood there in the dark, the only sound being the faint ticking of the watch on my wrist. My breath was shallow, my pulse quick. I couldn't see anything, but I could feel it. The weight of something unseen in the room with me. It was like the very air had shifted again, the atmosphere charged with something I couldn't explain. And then, I heard it. A knock. It wasn't at the door this time. It was coming from inside the house. The knock echoed through the house like a pulse, steady and deliberate. I froze, listening, my breath catching in my throat. There was no mistaking it. The knock was coming from somewhere inside, not from the front door, not from a neighbor's house, but from within my walls. I stood there paralyzed for what felt like an eternity trying to convince myself I had misheard. Maybe it was the wind, or the house settling, something normal. But deep down I knew it wasn't. Something about the knock was deliberate. It wasn't random, it was purposeful, like someone, or something, was making sure I heard it. The power was still out, and the house was completely dark. The only light came from my phone screen, casting a faint blue glow as I fumbled to turn on the flashlight. The moment the light cut through the shadows, I moved cautiously toward the sound. My heart pounded with every step, but I couldn't turn back. I needed to know where the knock was coming from and why it felt connected to the box sitting untouched on the table. As I got closer, I realized the knock was coming from the basement. The door was slightly ajar, something I knew I hadn't left that way. The air around it felt different, colder, like stepping into a place that didn't belong in my house. I pushed the door open, the creaking hinge louder than I expected, and shone my flashlight down the stairs. There was nothing unusual, at least not at first glance. Just the unfinished basement with exposed beams, concrete floors, and the usual clutter of old furniture and storage boxes. But as I reached the bottom step, the knocking started again. This time it was coming from the far corner of the basement where an old cabinet I rarely touched was stored. I approached slowly, the sound growing louder with each step. I was close enough now to see that the cabinet doors were rattling, just slightly but enough to send a shiver through me. I reached for the handle, my hand trembling. I didn't want to open it, but I had to. I couldn't just walk away. The moment my fingers touched the wood, the knocking stopped. Silence. I pulled the cabinet door open, expecting, what? I wasn't sure. But inside, there was nothing but dust and a few forgotten tools. My flashlight beam swept across the empty shelves, and that's when I saw it. Another box, identical to the one upstairs. Same size, same plain brown cardboard, same unsettling lack of any markings, except for my name scrawled across the top in that same familiar handwriting. My stomach dropped. How was this possible? There hadn't been anything in the cabinet before I was sure of it. I backed away my mind racing. There was no way this could be happening, yet here it was. Another box, just like the first. But this time, I knew better. The warnings had been clear. Do not open the next box. I wasn't going to make the same mistake twice. I grabbed a tarp from a nearby shelf and threw it over the box, covering it completely. I wasn't sure why I did it. Maybe to stop myself from being tempted to open it. 
or maybe it was just to keep the box out of sight, out of mind. Either way, I needed to get out of the basement. The air was thick, and I could feel a weight pressing down on me, like I wasn't supposed to be there anymore. I rushed back upstairs, closing the basement door behind me. My breathing was heavy, but I tried to calm myself. The power was still out, the house eerily silent except for the faint ticking of the watch on my wrist. I looked down at it again, hoping for some kind of clue, but the time was normal. Nothing had changed. For a few minutes I stood in the middle of the living room, trying to make sense of what had just happened. Two boxes, one upstairs and one in the basement, both addressed to me, both with no explanation. And the knocking. Why had it stopped the moment I opened the cabinet? Was it some kind of warning, or had I just interrupted something? I sat down on the couch, my mind still racing. The darkness in the room seemed to press in from all sides, the weight of the situation growing heavier with each passing second. I couldn't help but think about the first box, the one I'd opened without hesitation. Had that been the trigger for all of this? Was the watch tied to these events in ways I couldn't understand? The warnings seemed to be escalating, and I couldn't shake the feeling that time itself was unraveling around me. And then, as if to confirm my worst fears, the watch on my wrist began to glow faintly. At first, I thought I was imagining it. But no, the faint, almost imperceptible light was real. I held my wrist up to my face, squinting to get a better look. The glow wasn't coming from the face of the watch, though. It was coming from the engraved message on the back. The words, next time, don't open the box, shimmered with a dull, otherworldly light, like it was being charged by something beyond my understanding. And then, just as quickly as it had started, the glow faded, leaving behind only the cold metal of the watch. I stared at it my mind struggling to process what was happening. Whatever this was, it wasn't over. The warnings, the boxes, the figure outside, they were all connected pieces of a puzzle I couldn't yet see. But one thing was clear, I wasn't just being pulled into this, I was in it, and there was no way out. I sat there for what felt like hours, waiting for something else to happen. But the house stayed quiet, the power remained off, and no more knocks came from inside or outside. The only sound was the ticking of the watch, each second a reminder that time was moving forward, whether I wanted it to or not. I couldn't take it anymore. I needed to know what I was dealing with. I grabbed my phone and, using the last bit of battery, searched for anything I could find on mysterious packages, time loops, or strange occurrences linked to dark websites. But every search led to dead ends. No forums, no blogs, no conspiracy theories even came close to what I was experiencing. And then, just as my phone's screen dimmed, one final notification appeared. It was a message from the same anonymous user who had warned me before. The subject line was simple. It's coming. Before I could open the message, my phone died. I sat there in the dark, staring at the dead screen, knowing that something was coming. I didn't know what or when but I had a feeling it was tied to the next box, the one I hadn't opened, and I had no idea if I could resist the temptation when the time came. The house was silent, almost suffocatingly so. My phone lay dead in my hand, the screen dark and unresponsive. The last message echoed in my mind. It's coming. I didn't know what it was, but I felt it creeping closer, like the ticking of the watch on my wrist was counting down to something inevitable. The two boxes, one in the living room, the other hidden in the basement, sat like looming reminders of the choices I'd made. I had resisted opening the second one, but for how long could I keep resisting? As the hours passed, a growing sense of urgency overtook me. The power hadn't come back, and the world outside my window seemed strangely still, almost like the entire neighborhood was holding its breath. My thoughts spiraled. What if it wasn't just coming for me? What if I'd triggered something bigger, something that couldn't be stopped? I stood up, pacing around the living room, my eyes constantly flicking to the unopened box. Every fiber of my being was telling me not to touch it, not to give in, 
but my curiosity gnawed at me like a slow, steady pulse. There was a reason that second box had appeared, just like the first. There was a reason for the warnings, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized the warnings weren't to protect me. They were guiding me, pushing me toward a decision. A decision I wasn't sure I could make. I glanced at the watch again, half expecting the engraving to change, but it remained the same. The second hand ticked forward, steady and relentless. But there was no glow this time, no sign of the strange energy I had felt before. Just the cold, metallic weight on my wrist, keeping track of time as it slipped away. I sat back down on the couch, staring at the box in front of me. The tarp-covered one in the basement was still on my mind, but it was this one, this final box, that felt like the tipping point. Whatever was inside, I knew it was important. It felt like everything had been leading up to this. And then, like clockwork, there was a knock at the door. This time, I didn't hesitate. I walked to the door, fully expecting another empty doorstep. Another strange clue, but when I opened it, my heart skipped a beat. Standing there was the figure from before, tall, dark, featureless, like a shadow given form. It didn't move, didn't make a sound, but I could feel its presence like a weight pressing down on my chest, and in its hands it held yet another box, identical to the first two. I didn't know what to say. I just stood there, frozen in place, my mind racing. The figure didn't speak, but I felt something between us, a connection, like it knew me, like it had always known me. Without thinking, I reached out and took the box from its hands. The moment I touched it, the figure disappeared. One second it was there, the next it was gone, leaving me standing alone on my porch with yet another box in my hands. I carried it inside, my hands trembling. This third box was different somehow, heavier, more final. I placed it on the table next to the first one and sat down, staring at the two of them side by side. I knew what I had to do. The watch on my wrist ticked forward, marking the seconds as I reached for the knife on the table. I didn't want to open it. I didn't want to see what was inside. But the warnings, the boxes, the figure, they were all leading me here. And now, there was no turning back. I sliced through the tape of the first box, the one that had been sitting there since yesterday. I held my breath as I lifted the lid, my heart racing. Inside was another watch, identical to the one I was already wearing. I stared at it, my mind spinning. What did this mean? Was this some kind of trick, a loop I had been trapped in? I reached for the watch, but as my fingers brushed against it, something strange happened. The room around me seemed to ripple, like the very fabric of reality was shifting. For a brief moment, everything went dark, and I felt like I was being pulled through time itself, spinning through an endless void. And then, just as quickly, I was back in my living room, the world returning to normal. I looked down at my wrist, expecting to see the same watch as before. But it wasn't there. The watch was gone. In its place was the second watch, the one from the box. It was identical in every way, except for one thing. The engraving on the back had changed. This time it didn't say anything about opening the box. Instead, it simply read, Your future is already written. Do you want to see how it ends? I felt a cold sense of dread wash over me. My future was already written. I looked at the second box, the one I had just received from the figure. The final box, the one that held the answer to everything. I didn't want to open it, but I knew I had no choice. This was the moment I had been led to, the moment where everything would make sense or fall apart. With shaky hands, I sliced through the tape of the final box and lifted the lid. Inside was a single note, folded neatly at the bottom. I unfolded it slowly, my hands trembling. The note read, You've already seen how this ends. Stop trying to change it. I stared at the words, my mind spinning. What did it mean? Had I been trapped in some kind of loop this whole time? Was my fate sealed, no matter what I did? As I sat there, 
the watch on my wrist ticked forward, its steady rhythm echoing through the silence. And that's when I realized the truth. The boxes, the warnings, the figure. They were all me. My future self, trying to guide me. Trying to keep me from making the same mistakes over and over again. But in the end, it didn't matter. Because time, time wasn't something you could change. It was something you had to live with. And as the watch ticked on, I knew that I had already seen how this would end. I just hadn't accepted it yet. It's been six years since my dad disappeared. Most people think he's dead, and I've gone along with that explanation for a while now because it's easier. It's easier than telling people the truth, which even I have a hard time accepting. But recently, things have started happening that I can't ignore anymore, and I'm starting to believe my dad wasn't just lost in some random accident. I think he was abducted by aliens. To give you some context, my dad was an amateur astronomer. He wasn't a scientist or anything, just a guy with a telescope and a deep fascination with the night sky. Every night, when most people were winding down, he'd be outside in our backyard with his telescope pointed up at the stars scribbling notes in his weathered journal. He'd drag me out there sometimes, showing me constellations and making up stories about the universe. As a kid, I didn't think much of it, just a hobby, something to pass the time. But in the months leading up to his disappearance, he became obsessed. His regular stargazing turned into all-night sessions, and he started talking about strange patterns he'd been noticing, flashes of light, objects moving in ways they shouldn't, I thought it was just his imagination running wild. He'd always had a vivid imagination. One night, he came into my room, more excited than I'd ever seen him. I saw something tonight, something I can't explain, he said, gripping the doorframe like he couldn't contain himself. I didn't think much of it at the time. I was 17, busy with school, and honestly, it sounded a bit crazy to me. Probably just a satellite or something, I remember muttering before turning over and going back to sleep. I regret that now. That was the last real conversation I had with him. Two nights later, he vanished. The police, of course, conducted their investigation. They found his car abandoned at a rest stop near the woods, but no sign of foul play. Just gone. No body, no clues. Eventually, they ruled it a missing person case and after years with no new leads, declared him dead. My mom was devastated, but she eventually accepted it, moved on as best she could. But I couldn't. Something about the whole thing never sat right with me. He was too careful, too cautious to just disappear like that. For years, I tried to push those thoughts aside. I told myself he'd probably gotten lost or had some kind of accident. I didn't want to consider anything else. But then, a few months ago, strange things started happening that made me rethink everything. It started with the radio. I was driving home late one night when the signal suddenly cut out. At first, I thought nothing of it. It happened sometimes in our small town. But then, the static wasn't just random noise. It sounded like something trying to break through. A voice, or something else. It was faint, distorted, but it almost sounded like my dad. I pulled over to the side of the road, my heart racing. The voice on the radio cut in and out, barely audible, but I swore I heard the words, help me. I sat there for what felt like an hour, listening to the crackling noise, hoping for more, but it was gone as quickly as it came. I tried to convince myself it was my mind playing tricks on me, but deep down, I knew it wasn't. After that night, more things started happening. Lights in the sky flickering at odd times. Not the usual planes or satellites, but something that moved with purpose. I would wake up in the middle of the night to see strange patterns glowing faintly through my bedroom window. Too symmetrical, too organized to be a coincidence. It was like someone or something was trying to send me a message. And then there were the voices, not just on the radio, but sometimes in the house late at night. They were faint, just whispers but unmistakable. I'd catch glimpses of shadows moving through the hallway, and when I called out, 
There was no response. It felt like my dad was trying to reach out, like he was somewhere uh, close but not close enough. I started going through his old notes, the journal he kept by his telescope. Most of it was filled with charts, dates, and star positions. Nothing out of the ordinary. But towards the end, things got strange. He'd drawn diagrams of objects he'd seen in the sky, things that didn't look like anything I'd ever seen before. And the last few entries were different. He wrote about how he felt like he was being watched, like someone or something was following him. He mentioned hearing voices in the static of his radio, seeing lights in the sky that weren't stars. It mirrored everything I'd been experiencing. The last entry he wrote before he disappeared was the most disturbing. They're here, it read. I saw them tonight. I don't think I'll be able to hide much longer. That's when I knew. My dad didn't just vanish. He was taken. I haven't told anyone about this yet because I know how it sounds. Trust me, I'm not someone who jumps to crazy conclusions. But the evidence is right in front of me. I can't shake the feeling that my dad is still out there somewhere, trying to reach me. The radio signals, the lights, the whispers, they're all connected. I just need to figure out how. And now, I'm starting to see the same patterns in the sky that my dad talked about. The same flashes of light. The same strange movements. I'm scared, but I have to know the truth. I don't know what's going to happen next. But I'm going to keep searching, just like my dad did. Maybe I'll find him. Maybe I'll find something I'm not ready for. Either way, I need to know. After that night with the radio, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was getting closer to something. Something I didn't fully understand, but needed to. It felt like I was retracing my dad's steps, walking the same path that had led to his disappearance. I wasn't sure if I should be terrified or relieved that I might actually be right. I started spending more time outside at night, watching the sky the way he used to. I didn't have the same equipment, no telescope, just a pair of binoculars and an old notebook I found in his study. I figured if he was keeping notes, I should too. At first, there wasn't much to write down. A few faint glimmers in the sky, things I could probably explain away if I really tried. But the more I watched, the more things started to stand out. One night, about a week after the incident with the radio, I noticed something different. It was around 2 a.m., and I was sitting in the backyard, bundled up in a jacket with the binoculars pressed to my face, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. There were three lights in the sky, forming a perfect triangle. At first I thought they were stars, but they were moving, slowly, steadily, like they were being controlled. I tracked them for about 20 minutes as they crossed the sky, and then, just like that, they disappeared. The strange thing was, right after the lights vanished, my phone buzzed in my pocket. I pulled it out expecting a random notification or maybe a message from one of my friends, but there was nothing. Just a strange app I'd never seen before. Its icon, a simple black square. I didn't remember downloading it, and when I opened it, the screen stayed black. No text, no images, nothing. After a few seconds, it just closed itself. It was a small thing, but it unnerved me. My phone had always been reliable, never any glitches or random apps appearing out of nowhere. I tried to delete it, but every time I tapped on the icon, the screen would freeze for a moment and then go back to normal. It wouldn't go away, no matter what I did. I decided to leave it for the night and deal with it later. The next morning, though, something even stranger happened. I was in the kitchen making breakfast when my mom came in, looking like she hadn't slept much. She sat down at the table and said, I had the weirdest dream about your dad last night. I didn't say anything at first because honestly I didn't want to get into it. My mom had been through enough after dad disappeared, and I didn't want to drag her into whatever was going on. But she kept talking. In the dream, I was in the backyard, and he was there, standing by the telescope like he always used to. He didn't say anything, but he looked different, like he was trying to tell me something but couldn't find the words. And then, just before I woke up, 
He pointed up at the sky. I looked up, and there were all these lights, moving in strange patterns. It felt so real. My heart started racing. I hadn't told her about the lights I'd seen the night before. I hadn't told her about the app or the radio or any of the strange things that had been happening. And yet, here she was, describing almost exactly what I'd experienced. I wanted to believe it was just a coincidence, but deep down, I knew it wasn't. There was something bigger going on, something I didn't fully understand yet. My dad was trying to reach us, through dreams, through signals, through whatever means he could. That night I stayed up late again, waiting for the lights to return, and sure enough, around the same time as the night before, I saw them. The same triangle, the same slow movement across the sky. I took out my phone, half expecting it to buzz again, but this time it stayed silent. The strange app was still there though, just sitting on my home screen taunting me. I clicked on it again, and this time something happened. The screen lit up and a single line of text appeared. We have him. I stared at the screen, my heart pounding. I tried to type a response, but before I could, the app closed itself again. I sat there, staring at my phone, trying to make sense of what I'd just seen. I wanted to scream, to run into the house and tell my mom everything, but I didn't. I didn't even move. I just sat there, staring up at the sky knowing that whatever was happening was beyond anything I'd ever imagined. I didn't know who we was. I didn't know if this was some kind of elaborate joke or something far more sinister. But I knew one thing for sure. My dad wasn't dead. He was out there somewhere, and he was trying to get back to us. The question was, who had him, and what did they want? I spent the rest of the night scrolling through the app, hoping for more messages, more clues, but nothing came. The next day, I searched online for anything that might explain what was going on, but all I found were conspiracy theories and wild speculation. None of it felt real, but I knew what I had seen, and I knew that I couldn't stop looking, not now. Whatever was out there, I had to find it. I had to find my dad. After that night, I became obsessed. I couldn't think about anything else but the message, we have him. Those three words haunted me, played over and over in my mind like a broken record. Who was we? And how could they possibly have my dad? It was like I was living in some kind of nightmare, but I couldn't wake up, and every clue I found just pulled me in deeper. I started doing more research. I found forums where people talked about UFO sightings and strange disappearances. I even came across a few threads where people claimed to have been abducted by aliens themselves. Most of them sounded fake, just attention seekers, but some, some felt eerily familiar. The patterns, the lights, the strange electronic interference, it all lined up too perfectly with what I'd been experiencing. One night, I found a post on a dark corner of the web that hit too close to home. It was from a guy who claimed to have been contacted by extraterrestrial beings after his father went missing. He described how they communicated with him through strange signals and unexplainable messages, just like the app on my phone. At first, I thought it was just another wild theory, but something about the way he described it, the details, the timing, made me pause. It was too specific to be a coincidence. I reached out to him, half expecting no response, but he replied almost immediately. His message was short, just a few lines. If they've contacted you, it's too late to turn back. They don't make mistakes. That was it. No explanation, no details, just a cryptic warning. I tried messaging him again, asking what he meant, but the account disappeared the next day. Vanished, just like my dad. I couldn't let it go. I started going back through my dad's old notes looking for anything that might give me a clue about what he'd been researching before he disappeared. His handwriting was scrawled across dozens of pages, filled with dates, star positions, and strange symbols I couldn't understand. He'd circled certain constellations, made notes about specific times of night, 
and left cryptic messages in the margins. They're watching. Don't trust the lights. I'm close. Then I found something that stopped me cold. A map. It was tucked between the pages of his journal, folded up like he'd been hiding it. It was a hand-drawn sketch of a place I recognized instantly. The old woods behind our town. He'd marked a specific location deep within the trees, far off any of the usual trails. I'd been in those woods a hundred times as a kid, but I'd never ventured that far. The map had no notes, no explanation, just a single X marking a spot. I couldn't ignore it, I had to see for myself. The next evening, I packed a small bag, grabbed a flashlight, and headed into the woods. I didn't tell anyone where I was going. I didn't want to drag anyone else into this until I knew what I was dealing with. The woods were dense, and the farther I went, the quieter it got. The sounds of the town faded behind me, replaced by the rustle of leaves and the crunch of twigs under my feet. As I followed the map, a strange tension settled over me like the air itself was holding its breath. I kept walking, deeper and deeper into the forest. The map led me to a clearing I'd never seen before. It wasn't particularly large, just a patch of ground surrounded by towering trees. But the moment I stepped into it, I felt an odd sensation, like I had just walked into a space that wasn't entirely natural. The air felt different here, thicker somehow, almost humming with an energy I couldn't explain. In the center of the clearing, I noticed something strange, an old rusted metal object partially buried in the dirt. At first I thought it was some kind of wreckage, maybe an old car or piece of equipment left behind by campers. But as I got closer, I realized it wasn't like anything I'd ever seen. It was too smooth, too perfectly shaped, almost as if it didn't belong to this world at all. I crouched down, running my hand over the surface. It was cold to the touch despite the warm night air and covered in strange markings. They looked almost like symbols etched into the metal, and for some reason, they reminded me of the drawings in my dad's journal. That's when I heard it. A low humming sound, faint but unmistakable, coming from somewhere beneath the object. I stepped back, my heart racing, and the ground beneath my feet seemed to tremble slightly. The humming grew louder, more intense, and then, out of nowhere, my phone buzzed in my pocket. I pulled it out, half expecting another cryptic message, but it wasn't a text. It was the strange app again, flashing on my screen. This time, when I opened it, the message was different. He's here. My breath caught in my throat. I looked around the clearing, half expecting to see someone or something watching me, but I was alone. The humming grew louder, almost deafening now, and the ground shook beneath my feet. I didn't know what to do. Every instinct told me to run, but I couldn't move. I was rooted to the spot, staring at the object as if it held all the answers I'd been searching for. And then, just as suddenly as it had started, the humming stopped. The ground went still, and the air became eerily quiet. I waited, my heart pounding in my chest, but nothing happened. The object lay silent in the dirt, the strange symbols gleaming faintly in the moonlight. I didn't know what I'd just witnessed, but one thing was clear. I was getting closer. Whatever this was, whoever had taken my dad, they were leading me somewhere. I just didn't know where yet. I stood there for a long time, staring at the object, trying to make sense of everything. But the truth was, I didn't have any answers. Not yet. I knew one thing for sure, though. I wasn't done. Not by a long shot. After the encounter in the woods, I couldn't stop thinking about the buried object and the cryptic message I'd received. He's here. The whole experience had rattled me, but it also left me more convinced than ever that my dad was out there, somewhere. I just needed to figure out what this signal was trying to tell me. For days, I couldn't focus on anything else. I started waking up in the middle of the night, obsessively going through my dad's journal scanning his old notes for any detail I might have missed. I felt like I was on the verge of something big, 
like I was piecing together a puzzle that only I could see. But no matter how hard I tried, there was always something just out of reach, like the truth was buried beneath layers of static and noise, waiting to be uncovered. The strange app on my phone stayed silent for a few days after that night in the woods. I checked it constantly, hoping for more clues, but nothing came. I thought about going back to the clearing, but something told me that I wasn't ready for whatever I might find. Not yet. Then, late one evening, the signal came again. It was just after midnight, and I was sitting in my room staring blankly at my laptop. I'd been scrolling through old family photos, searching for any sign of what might have led to my dad's disappearance. That's when the app lit up again. This time, the message was more urgent. Follow the signal. It's closer than you think. I didn't know what it meant, but something about the timing felt deliberate. I jumped up, grabbing my jacket and phone, and rushed outside. I had no idea what I was looking for, but I knew I couldn't ignore the message. Not this time. The night was quiet as I stepped into the backyard, the cool breeze brushing against my face. The stars were out, scattered across the sky like tiny beacons, and for a moment, I felt a strange sense of calm. But that didn't last long. As I stood there, staring up at the sky, something caught my attention. A faint pulsing light coming from the far end of the yard. It wasn't like the usual stars or planes that sometimes flew overhead. This light was different. It blinked in a steady rhythm, almost like it was signaling to me. Without thinking, I followed it. The light led me beyond the backyard, through the trees, and towards the clearing I had discovered before. My heart was pounding as I made my way through the woods, but the light never wavered, always just ahead, guiding me. When I reached the clearing, the light stopped. I stood there for a moment, catching my breath, and then I saw it. The same rusted object buried in the dirt, but now it was glowing faintly. The strange symbols I'd noticed before were illuminated, pulsing with a soft, otherworldly light. I didn't understand how or why, but I knew that whatever this was, it was connected to my dad. I took out my phone, hoping for more guidance, and sure enough, the app buzzed to life again. This time it displayed a series of strange numbers and symbols, flashing across the screen too quickly for me to process. It was like the phone was trying to decode something, but I couldn't make sense of it. Frustrated, I knelt beside the object, running my hands over its surface. The metal was still cold, even though the glow radiated a strange warmth. I tried digging around it with my hands, pulling at the dirt to see if there was more hidden beneath, but it wouldn't budge. Whatever it was, it was buried deep. Suddenly, the ground beneath me began to tremble again, just like before. I scrambled back, my heart racing as the object started to hum. It was louder this time, more intense, and the symbols on the surface grew brighter. I could feel the vibration in the air, almost like the object was coming to life. And then, just as quickly as it had started, everything went silent. The object stopped glowing, the ground stilled, and the clearing was plunged into darkness once again. I stood there, shaking unsure of what had just happened. It felt like I was on the edge of something, like I'd come so close to uncovering the truth only to have it slip away at the last second. I stayed there for a while, waiting for something, anything, to happen. But the clearing remained silent. Defeated, I started to head back towards the house, feeling more lost than ever. But as I walked, something strange happened. My phone buzzed again, but this time it wasn't a message from the app. It was an incoming call from my dad's number. I froze, staring at the screen. I hadn't seen that number in six years. My heart felt like it was going to explode out of my chest. Without thinking, I answered. There was nothing but static at first. I held the phone to my ear, waiting, hoping, praying for something, some sign that it was really him. And then, through the crackling noise, I heard it. His voice. It was faint, barely audible, but unmistakable. I'm here. I almost dropped the phone. My knees went weak, and I had to sit down right there in the middle of the woods. Dad? I whispered, my voice shaking. Where are you? There was more static, and then a long pause. Finally, I heard him again, clearer this time. They took me, but I'm close. 
keep looking. The call ended abruptly, leaving me in stunned silence. I stared at my phone, my mind racing. It had to be him. There was no other explanation. But if he was still out there, where was he? And who, no, what had taken him? I didn't have all the answers yet, but one thing was clear. I wasn't imagining this. My dad was alive and he was trying to reach me. I just had to figure out how to reach him. The night had grown darker, the stars overhead barely visible through the canopy of trees, but I knew I couldn't stop now. The signal was real. The messages were real. And my dad was still out there waiting for me to find him. Whatever it took, I was going to bring him home. After hearing my dad's voice on the phone, I didn't sleep for days. My mind was in overdrive, trying to piece together the fragments of what was happening. I kept replaying the call in my head. They took me, but I'm close. Keep looking. It was real. There was no mistaking his voice, no denying the urgency in his words. My dad was alive, and he needed me to find him. I became fixated on the strange app constantly checking it for new messages. Every time my phone buzzed, my heart would leap, hoping for more answers. But for days, nothing happened. The app stayed silent, no new messages or strange symbols. It was as if whoever, or whatever, was behind it had gone dark. I kept going back to the clearing, hoping for another sign. But the buried object remained cold and lifeless, the symbols no longer glowing. It felt like I had reached a dead end, and I didn't know what to do next. Then, one evening, something strange happened again. I was sitting in the kitchen, staring blankly at my phone, when the TV in the living room flickered to life on its own. At first, I thought it was just a glitch. Maybe the remote was acting up. But when I walked over to turn it off, I saw something that stopped me cold. The screen wasn't showing any channel I recognized. Instead, it was filled with static but within the static there was a faint image, something moving. I squinted, trying to make it out, and then I saw it. A figure standing in the middle of a room, their face obscured by shadows. The figure was tall, dressed in a worn jacket that looked eerily familiar. My heart skipped a beat. It was my dad. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The image was grainy, barely visible, but I knew it was him. He stood there motionless, as if he was waiting for something, or someone. The static crackled, and for a brief second, the screen cleared enough for me to see his face. His eyes were wide, filled with a strange mix of fear and determination, and then the screen cut to black. I stood there in stunned silence, my hands shaking. I couldn't explain how or why, but I knew my dad was trying to reach me, through the phone, the TV, the strange signals in the sky. It was all connected, and I was getting closer to the truth. I didn't waste any time. Grabbing my phone, I rushed out the door and into the woods, heading straight for the clearing. It was dark, the air thick with the promise of rain, but I didn't care. I had to see if the object had activated again, if there was some new clue waiting for me. When I arrived at the clearing, everything looked the same, silent, still. But as I approached the buried object, my phone buzzed again. I pulled it out, my heart racing, and saw a new message from the app. Look closer. I didn't know what that meant, but I wasn't about to ignore it. I knelt beside the object, brushing away the dirt that had settled around it. As I looked closer at the strange symbols etched into the metal, I noticed something I hadn't seen before. A small, almost invisible indentation on one side, like a hidden panel. I pressed on it, and to my surprise, the panel slid open with a soft click. Inside was a small device, no bigger than a deck of cards, glowing faintly with the same otherworldly light as the object itself. I had no idea what it was or what it did, but I knew it was important. Before I could examine it further, the ground beneath me began to shake. The familiar hum returned, louder than ever, and the object started to pulse with light. 
The trees around me swayed as if reacting to the vibrations, and I stumbled back, clutching the device in my hands. Suddenly, a beam of light shot out from the object, piercing through the sky like a signal. I watched in awe as the beam seemed to split the night, reaching higher and higher until it disappeared into the stars. It was mesmerizing, but also terrifying. I had no idea what was happening, but I couldn't look away. And then, in the midst of the light, I saw them. Figures, tall, slender, and not entirely human, emerged from the edge of the clearing. They moved silently, their forms barely visible in the glow, but I knew what they were. My dad had been right all along. They weren't just stars in the sky or random lights. They were here. I froze, clutching the small device tighter, unsure of what to do. The figures didn't approach me. Instead, they hovered near the object, as if inspecting it. Then, without warning, the beam of light dimmed and the figures faded into the darkness. For a moment, everything was still. The hum stopped, the light disappeared, and the clearing was once again bathed in silence. I stood there, trembling, my mind racing with questions. What had I just witnessed? What were those figures? And what did they want? But before I could process any of it, my phone buzzed one last time. I glanced down, my hands shaking, and saw a final message from the app. He's safe. Don't follow. And just like that, the app disappeared from my phone. The icon vanished, leaving no trace that it had ever been there. I stood in the clearing for what felt like hours, trying to make sense of everything. The truth was, I didn't have all the answers. I still didn't know exactly what had happened to my dad or why he had been taken, but I knew one thing for sure. He was alive, and somehow, he was safe. As I made my way back home, the weight of everything that had happened settled over me. My dad had been right all along. There was something out there, something far beyond our understanding. But they had let me go, and they had spared him. For now, that was enough.